Hey, what's up guys? It's TechSumer talking to you here. And in today's video, I want to talk about the M3 Macs that are supposedly coming out this October. Yes, we are getting new Macs this October and you're probably asking yourself, should I wait for these new Macs or should I buy the older but still very good M2 Max MacBook Pros or even the better value M1 Max, M1 Pro MacBook Pros. So in today's video, I want to discuss what is this new M3 generation bringing to the table, of course, what can we expect from these new MacBooks in terms of hardware and should you wait, should you not wait, or should you just buy a Mac right now? Well, if you are interested in today's video, do not forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. I know there's a lot of hype and a lot of videos about the iPhone 15 event. It's less than one week to go, but I'm trying to keep it calm. Variety on the channel is good. Of course, my next video will probably be about the iPhone 15 again, but still. Keep it variety and roll the intro. So, when can we expect the M3 Max to come out? Well, that's a good question, but according to leakers, the M3 Max will come out around the October to November timeline. We should expect an event from Apple where we will see announced an M3 MacBook Air, an M3 MacBook Pro, and maybe, just maybe, an M3 Mac Mini. Apple is going to follow their recipe where they launched the cheaper and lower end Macs first with a new generation and then they will scale up this chip to more powerful machines. So what should we expect from the new M3 Max? Well, the M3, yes, the M3, this will be a new generation for Apple. This is going to be a quantum leap for everything. For example, imagine if you pick up a chip and you put more cores on top of it. Well, you are not innovating, you are iterating because this chip will only consume more power. Yes, it will be more powerful, but it will only consume more power and so you will need a bigger power supply, it will create more heat and more trouble to your computer. So, for a laptop and a mobile machine, most of the time is not worth it. I know, Intel has been doing this for a long time and they've hit a wall because now they cannot put any more cores on it, they cannot put any more power on it because it will be too hot for the computer to handle. But Apple, Apple changed the game with Apple Silicon and now they're about to doing it again. This is a new beginning again for Apple Silicon just three years later with the introduction of 3 nanometers. 3 nanometers will be the new architecture for Apple Silicon. And this is really important because 3 nanometers will enable Apple to actually create more efficient chips with the same amount of cores or a little bit more cores without increasing the power needs. So these computers will be more powerful, but especially way more efficient. So if they are going to be more efficient, Apple can increase the number of cores without sacrificing of course, on power per watt performance. So this is huge. We could get even more powerful computers, especially the lower end computers, like the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, and the MacBook Pros with the M3. Not the M3 Pro and of course the M3 Max. Those will have even more implications and even bigger jumps, but the lower end machines will be the same price, will have much better battery life and a little bit better performance. That's what I'm expecting from these lower end machines. I don't think Apple wants to increase the performance levels of this machine too much. It doesn't make any sense. Most people are completely overkill with the current M2 MacBook Air. But if Apple, Apple puts the same amount of performance with this new architecture on these M3 machines, then, oh my God, we could be seeing like 25 hour, 30 hour battery life laptops. This is crazy. And I'm so, so excited. If Apple can do it, they will probably also increase the performance. I'm not just saying that Apple will just focus on efficiency. No, they could make these computers way more powerful and even surpass the M1 Max computer that I have right here. Apple can create such a chip with the M3 on these MacBook Airs that it could be even more powerful than my M1 Max MacBook Pro from 2021. This is crazy. In just two years, Apple could completely surpass the expectations with Apple Silicon. But, but this does not stop here. Apple can also increase and take these power efficiency gains on the efficiency side from these lower end machines with the M3 and the 3 nanometer for the iPhone and of course, especially for the higher end Mac lineup. The iPhone is simple. If Apple wants to make better iPhones, faster iPhones with way better battery life, the 3 nanometer architecture is perfect. It will enable the iPhone to have way better battery life around I think 20% with the efficiency gains and it could also be more powerful. Of course, if the iPhone decides to increase the battery size again, like the rumors are saying, then, oh my God, 
oh my god, the iPhone will have crazy, crazy battery life. But let's forget about the iPhone for a bit and talk about the Mac, which the pro-level MacBooks and Macs like the Mac Studio will take also huge advantages from these. Because the MacBook Pros, just like this one, the M1 Max or the M2 Max or the 16-inch version, the 14-inch version, they will have insane power performance levels. These machines now will be able to outperform Mac Studios with the M2 Ultra or the M1 Ultra versions because they will have such performance on such small chips that don't consume that much power that, oh my god, they will probably outperform every single laptop on the market right now. And even if they don't, expect greater and increased battery gains on these computers also. So that's huge. That's really big. Trust me, M3 is way bigger than you're probably thinking. But now the question rises. Should you wait for this incredible generation with the M3? Well, I don't think so. I don't think that if you are looking for pro-level machines, you should wait. Because, again, like I told you, this M3 generation is first starting with the lower-end machines. If you are looking for the M2 MacBook Air, then don't buy it. And don't buy the M2 MacBook Pro, neither the M2 Mac Mini. Just don't. Wait for November, wait for October, and these machines will come out. And even if you don't want them, or you think they are not necessary, wait a bit, and of course, you will get the machines that you want for a cheaper price. So it's a win-win situation. It's not worth it to buy the lower end machines right now. Just wait a bit, a few months, and of course, get the M3 generation or buy used and lower end M2 generation with lower prices. But here's the big but. If you need a computer right now, then there's no point in waiting. You have to buy it. But don't buy it new, buy it refurbished, get a lower price for a better deal. Right now, it's one of the worst times to buy an iPhone and a lower end Mac. Don't buy an iPhone, please, just don't buy an iPhone right now. A new one will come out in one week, all the prices will be adjusted, you'll have a new offering, and the older ones will be cheaper. Don't buy an iPhone right now. And of course, don't buy the lower end Macs if you don't really need them. Just wait a bit, you will get better options and lower prices. So this is my recommendation for the lower end machines. But as for the high performance machines, I don't think it's time to wait yet, because I think these machines will be delayed, or at least launched, for only 2024. And that's the reason I think you should not wait. 2024 is still about six months, seven months away, at least the next Apple event with the new Apple Silicon, which is around the March timeline. If you think about it, eight months, which is the amount of time that you actually need to wait until March, or nine months for April, it's not worth it to wait because you could still get an amazing M2 Max machine and you're not sure if these machines are coming out in March or April, they could only come out on WWDC. So there's that risk. And if you need a computer right now or one for work and you need to actually enjoy and use this computer to make money, then there's no point in waiting. I think that the M2 Max version is still a very capable version. This is the M1 Max. I think this is the best value for money right now. Still very fast. Most of people are from YouTube that I know use the M1 Max not the M2 Max, the 16-inch computer is really, really good. The screen, the mini LED is still the same from the M1 Max to the M2 Max, can get this computer much cheaper. The RAM, I mean, you can get double the RAM on the M2 Max if you decide to, but that's truly very expensive. The keyboard is the same, the trackpad is the same, they are the best on the business. This computer is all made of aluminium with the new MacBook design. The design of the M2 Max is also the same. And of course, this computer features in my opinion, the best speaker system out there. And again, the M2 Max has the same speaker system. So the only upgrade that that machine got over the M1 Max was the chip and the RAM. So if you are focused on performance, but you don't need the bleeding edge, I think that going for the M1 Max version should be your best bet. But there's also the option of the 14 inch and of course the 15 inch MacBook Air. That's something you need to decide, but I don't think that Apple is going to upgrade the 15 inch MacBook Air with the M2 for the M3. They only launched it around the June, July timeline, so I don't think that six months is a good upgrade for the machine. I think Apple will start with the 13 inch and then do the 15 inch later, probably with the M3 and an M3 Pro version. I'm not sure, but I could be wrong. So wait a bit on the 15 inch MacBook Air. Has, has for this machine, the 16 inch version with a 14 inch version, there's no point in waiting for the MacBook Pros. I think right now is still a good time to buy maybe around January or December timeline starts to be kind of close for the new generation of the M3 Pro and M3 Max, 
But still, you can always get a very good value for these older machines, these older M1 Maxes, M2 Maxes, they still retain their value very, very well. So it's a matter of how much do you need it, how hard do you need it, and how well is your current machine. If you're still using the M2 Max, even the gains for the M3 Max, even if they are like 20%, I don't think it's worth it. The M2 Max is a really expensive machine and the price difference will be kind of big, like around $500 to $800, depending on the depreciation of the M2 Max computer. But be very careful because these machines, well, they last a long time. And now wasting money just upgrading from one version to another, you will just waste money. I think that primarily these machines are tools and of course, if the tool does the job, there's no need upgrading it because the objective is to make money, make profit and wasting money like that doesn't make any sense. As for consumer sites, I think that waiting for the new lower end computers right now is a good choice. Of course, I'm also expecting the M3 generation to come out to iPads and this, this is a very different story because I think maybe the iPad together with the iPhone might be the biggest winner with the M3 generation. Let's wait and see. The iPad has a very compact design very slim and very easy to hold and to use, very portable design that with the M3 generation could get a huge leapy performance without sacrificing on power and of course the thermals because the iPad is very limited by the thermals with that very thin and fanless design. But I want to see a big redesign to the iPad, not just the chip and for that, for that I'll have a different video. For the chip, the M3, we should wait and see what happens but I'm truly excited to see what Apple will launch around November or October timeline. That's really two months away after Apple's event for the iPhone 15. And if you are excited for that, don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel because I will have total coverage of that event and I'm super, super excited. The iPhone 15 is coming, the iPhone 15 Pro and Ultra will be the star of the show. So do not forget to follow my channel so you don't miss any of those videos. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Texas Talking to you here. Bye bye.